Hey y'all, this is the Reverend. Um, uh, coming at you with another Live to Play Network video road test. God, how come every time we do one of these, that looks like crap? Um, uh, just the way it goes. Hey, anyway, we're starting today with a uh, series of uh, reviews on this new generation of handheld digital recorders they call high resolution digital recorders. Um, this particular one is from Ederall, a division of Roland. Form factor is uh, kind of reminiscent of an older iPod or maybe an iPod Classic, um, about that same size, weighs next to nothing. Um, these units all have some things in common. Uh, most of them have built-in microphones. This one does here, the built-in stereo mic. Um, uh, the quality of the mics uh, varies. These happen to be very good. Um, uh, it also has a line-in jack and a jack for a uh, microphone in if you want to use a different microphone. Um, uh, and then you've got uh, you know, your power switch and DC power in. You can set uh, in the setup here what type of batteries you're using, if you're using alkalines or you're using NICADs. And um, I don't know this for sure, but I'm guessing that we're using NICADs and that if I plug it in, it should recharge those batteries at the same time. I'm um, hoping that's the case. Um, all of these uh, have, the other thing they have in common is that they record to some kind of digital media, usually some kind of card. In this case, you can see the bottom of it there, that's a secure digital, what they call an SD card. And it comes with the unit and, um, uh, and this will take up to, uh, God, you can buy these cards up to like 8 gigabytes, um, I, I believe. It depends on what you want to pay for them. There's also a USB jack there. You can cook this up to your computer and transfer files directly over. Most of these come with some kind of software. Um, this one happens to come with a version of, I believe, Cakewalk. Um, got some other features here on the back that are kind of cool. Uh, there's an on-off button for a limiter, which is built in, and you can adjust the parameters of it when you set the thing up. Plug-in power is basically phantom power. If you're going to uh, use an external microphone, that requires power, you can turn that on and get your power. There's a low cut filter. Um, we have it off because how we were using it, we didn't need it, but you can um, adjust the cutoff point there so to reduce rumble in a live recording. And uh, there's also a mic gain. We have it set to low because we're in a pretty loud environment. We use this to uh, record rehearsals with my band over the weekend. We actually used uh, like four of these um, on different mixes. Um, to try and get some idea of how they work. And you can see that little uh, indentation with the holes in it there. That's a little preview speaker. Um, so when you're recording, you can actually hit play on this deal and uh, put your ear up to it and make sure you're getting something that's worthwhile. Um, a lot of these, you have to plug in headphones to do that. Comes with this nifty little stand, which seemed hokey until I needed it. Um, and now I think it's kind of a cool little thing to come with it. Anyway, uh, we turn it on by holding down the power button on the side. And you can see the screen is nice and bright. Um, although it dims down after a short period of time, uh, which is adjustable. We've got it set at five seconds. And that uh, is all about power management, keeping the uh, battery alive as long as you can. Uh, the batteries we put in it on Sunday, we've got a, we did about an hour worth of recording and we've barely touched the batteries. Uh, it sets up real easily. Um, I'm not going to go through all the menu settings and everything, um, but you know, just to, to walk you through the basics on it, when you hit menu, you've got some options. So your recorder setup, and that's where you set up your, uh, your resolution um, and the type of file. It's actually set up to record WAV files now, but you can record MP3 files um, all the way down to 64 uh, kilobit files, which are, you know, really, really low resolution, but you can get a huge amount of recording time all the way up to 24-bit, 96 kilohertz WAV files, which is about double the re resolution of a commercial CD. Um, very, very high quality recording if that's what you want to do too. Um, in the player setup, which is the next one down, you've got a couple of neat features um, that you can uh, that you can access. Uh, you can see on the front there's a button that says speed and another that says reverb. And uh, in the player setup, you can adjust both of those. If right now the speed is set up in the player at 70%, although that's adjustable, 
if we were playing back and we were to hit that speed control, it would slow the file down and play it back at 70% of its actual speed, but at the same pitch, which makes it a great tool for learning new tunes. Learning, you know, if you get to a complicated area and you need to slow it down, um, you can do that without having to buy another piece of software or some other unit. Uh, the one next to it says reverb. Believe it or not, let's say you're making just, uh, you know, you've made a acoustic guitar and vocal recording and uh, you're playing it back for somebody, you want to wet it up a little bit, you can do it right here. It doesn't affect the file at all, it just adds some reverb to the output and you can specify the type of reverb and the depth. Um, the A-B loop switch, um, that's kind of a standard thing you can set up a point. Again, it's a learning tool. Um, you can take a file and set an A and B point and set it to loop between those two points over and over again until you tell it to stop. And then the split, this is like, this is really cool. If you're recording something long, like you're in a rehearsal or you're recording a show, and um, uh, you don't want to end up with one long 45 minute long file like we did here because I forgot to tell the person using it about this feature. Um, you just reach out and hit that split button between songs and every time you hit it, it will uh, start a new file, which is kind of cool. Uh, what else can we tell you about this? Uh, kind of a mid-range uh, unit as far as price goes. Uh, these things range between uh, a couple hundred dollars on the low end all the way up to about a thousand for the really high end uh, ones made by uh, Sony uh, and we'll get to one of Sony's uh, not quite as expensive ones as part of this series. Um, uh, they're using these things on movie sets, they're, they're, they're using these things all over the place. Um, it, very high quality, again this one is kind of mid-range as far as price but the quality is outstanding. Uh, the list on this is $450. I've seen it for between $350 and $400 online, depending on uh, you know which site you go to. Um, easy to use, outstanding uh, uh, sound quality. Um, you know it's not cheap, but uh, it's a great tool. I would I would really recommend you taking a look at one of these. Again, we're going to look at like four of them over the next uh, couple of weeks in, in a variety of price ranges with a variety of feature sets. This one has great feature sets that are really aimed at the musician. Um, just the fact that you've got that speed and reverb control um, is, is something that you don't see on, uh, on many of these. Uh, it's, it's just that nice little, little bit of extra. Uh, there's a file attached here um, that you should be able to get to on the same page where you can uh, download of the, rec of the recording we made off of this, and um, uh, it's, uh, it's less than a minute. Um, uh, in fact, I think the one we're going to use is less than 30 seconds, but you'll be able to hear through your system um, just what a recording off of this unit sounds like. Um, so there you go, the Ederol uh, R09HR. It records in WAV or MP3 formats up to 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. Um, Nice little unit, uh, something worth checking out. This is the Reverend, and I am, uh, well, I'm here for the L2P network, but now I'm out of here.